In this session, we will see five simple ways of sending effective emails using Outlook. Potentially, you can use the same techniques in other mailing applications as well. So let's start with the simplest possible thing, how to use color and highlight. The concept is really simple. When we write text, even if it is few paragraphs, people have very little attention span. So if you want to highlight what you have written, use color, bold or some other font formatting to attract attention. So even if someone is skimming through the content, they can pick up the keywords and then maybe they are more induced to look at it more seriously and respond faster. The second thing is very often we ask for inputs from tape people. So in this case, I am asking for four things. Maybe people want to respond to one or more of them. Don't read the content. This is random content, but assume four items. Now, what, imagine what will happen to the other party. They will have to open that mail, say reply, scroll down and then go to each item, press enter and write their replies. It's too much of effort. So how can we simplify that effort? Again, it's something which you always knew, but we didn't use it to our advantage. What is the idea? Instead of putting those four items as paragraphs, put them in a table. So exactly the same four items in four rows of a table. The second column of the table is empty and you send the mail like this. The moment people want to reply to it, they don't have to press enter or do any manual work. They go to the second column and put their responses. Let's go one step further. You got the reply and you want to respond to that response. What will you do? Add a column and that continues horizontally. It's not only convenient, it's much easier to correlate. Why? Because otherwise there will be paragraphs after paragraphs of people having written and you will have to struggle to find out who wrote what when. Whereas here in a structured manner, we are getting the same input and that's why it is easier to use. So that's number two. Third one. Very often, we write long replies. Whether we like it or not, sometimes we have to do it. For example, here is a reply which I have written or a new mail, doesn't matter. So I'm writing a mail explaining my view, but this is in the context of something else. So I've written a lot of it, but and there is a dispute which I'm trying to resolve and I'm ta talking about that dispute as well. And there is a customer in question and down below there is a possible solution. So I want to write it in this order because unless my view and customer's dispute is clear, I can't really justify my solution. So the order is correct. But if someone views this, what are they going to see? They are going to see only the view. They don't even know what I have written below. This may be very discouraging. There is very little chance that people are going to scroll. But while they are reading my view, I want them to know that I have written something below. Now that can be easily done by talking about dispute and solution. For example, just to say I have written about that as well. But again, how far is the dispute and how far is the solution? People still have to scroll which is painful. So why not go one step further, select this, press Ctrl K or if you don't want to do that, go to insert link, insert link. The shortcut is Ctrl K. It is written there. So when I say insert link, it gives me multiple options. I want place in the document and now I can choose the dispute and same thing I'll do for the solution. Of course, for this to work, we have to do one extra thing. What is that? I have to use heading styles, which are available in Outlook because it uses Word as the email editor. How do I do that? Suppose this was not formatted correctly, this is not going to work. So wherever you want to 
link to should be headings. How do we do that? You go to format text and apply heading one. This is heading one. You can use heading one, two, three, doesn't matter, but some heading has to be applied. If this was normal style, and then I go to insert hyperlink, notice that my view is not visible now. But if I come to my view and apply heading one, and then I go to the control K dialog, hyperlink dialog, it is visible. So that's all there is to it. While writing a long mail, make sure the important points, you apply heading and then create a summary and a table of contents. There is an even better way of doing this. You could have done this in Word and copy pasted it because in Word, there is a direct option in references which says insert table of contents. Copy paste that and it will automatically translate it to Outlook. So that is how you do cross referencing or a table of contents. Cross referencing means what? For whatever reason here you wanted to talk about dispute here. No problem. Exactly the same thing. Dispute. Done. So that's what I mean. POC and cross reference with a hyperlink option. And finally, very often we need to insert parts of some other document inside a mail. What do we generally do about that? We first create a mail and then I realize that I need to input something from somewhere. So I go and uh, open that file, scroll that file, find the area of interest, then copy paste. It's boring. So here is the deal. Insert reuse files. This shows you recent files. If not, you can search. So I'm going to take one of the recent files I used. PPT. When I click on it, it's going to show me individual slides. And maybe I want to insert this slide. Notice on each slide you get an insert slide button. So you click on it and then all that maybe you have to do is resize it. This is not just for PowerPoint. If it was Word, you would have been able to insert various parts of Word document, which could be tables also. Similarly, we can do it for Excel, but that's not all. There is more. And there is one thing called data types, which is fairly new. What do I mean by data types? If you go to Excel, if you go to Excel, you will see something called data under data, stocks and geography. Organization you may not see if you are not configured, but stocks and geography you will see. So what does it mean? It actually understands stock symbols and geographical terms. Now that is also available in the reuse part of it. So here, if I go to data types and type a geography, for example, Mumbai, notice what happens. It actually goes through formal data types, which are a part of Office 365 now, and it will show you this. This is not coming from Wikipedia. It's coming from an integrated service of Wolfram. So now I can insert this as it is or I can see more details and then add from there. So this is just for geography. Let's try it with a stock. So let's say MSFT. Again, it understands that it is a stock symbol and this is coming from a different provider. All right. Again, I can see more details, add it as a table. If I say this whole thing is added as a table. All right. Now let's try something else, which is completely different. So Wolfram has a database which contains not just locations, but many other knowledge areas like physics, chemistry, biology, botany, medical field. So let's say I type an element name. Now, again, it is going to understand which is the database I should go to and pick it up accordingly. So it's now searching for carbon. And then this came from Wolfram. This came from Wolfram like that. And you can actually choose the same concept and add more details. So that's the functionality of insert reuse files. So that is all I wanted to explain about effective use of email. I hope this was useful to you. If you like it, please subscribe and press the bell icon. That's all for now.
Thank you.